Hey there! Welcome to the 27th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of EasyProgramming.net. In the next few tutorials, we'll go over custom functions in JavaScript. We've used functions in the past in the Easy JavaScript series, and now it's time for a deeper dive. So, what is a function? A function is just a block of code designed to perform a particular task. Functions are reusable and can be used as many times as you'd like. When you're calling a function, the proper term of a function is called invoke, and functions can be invoked multiple times within the same script or even from an external script if a reference to the function definition exists. Functions can be tied to buttons, which we have seen in the onClick tutorial, and can be used as methods in objects, which we'll cover in another tutorial. Uh, functions are declared using the reserve keyword named function, followed by the name of the function. Uh, they can also be assigned to variables, and that's something we'll briefly look at today. Uh, the functions can either return a value or just do execute a piece of code and then just end, and that's what we'll cover in this tutorial. So, functions are normally found at the end of your script. They're usually, if you've seen JavaScript in the past, if you've seen some of my code in the past, you've seen that I usually do JavaScript functions at the very end. So let's take a look at the syntax of a function and see what it looks like. So you start out with the keyword function, followed by the name of the function. Remember that everything in JavaScript is case sensitive, so if you're using camel case, when you're invoking the function, make sure you use camel case as well. And in parentheses, you put in something called parameters. You can have as many parameters as you'd like, or you can have no parameters. They're separated by commas. And parameters are basically placeholders uh, waiting for information to be given to it from when you invoke the function. Uh, which we'll take a look at in a second. Uh, once you have your parameters ready, in curly braces you execute a block of code. You can do something with parameter 1, parameter 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, you don't always have to do anything with parameters if you're just holding on to it to pass on to another function, something we will do uh, in a future tutorial. And at the very end, you can return something uh, back to where from wherever this function was invoked. Uh, it's optional, you don't always have to return anything. If you don't return anything, then it's assumed that your function is just uh, executing a piece of code and then ending. So it, to invoke a function, you name the function, you call the function, and in parentheses, uh, you send its arguments. If you don't have any arguments, you still need to do open and close parentheses, just leave it blank. So in our example here, argument 1 lines up with parameter 1 and argument 2 lines up with parameter 2. So any information you invoke and send into argument 1, it will actually go into parameter 1, which you can be, which you can use within the function itself. They don't always have to be named the same, although you, you've probably seen people name them the same, like if this is called x, this will also be called x. It's not always uh, recommended because it can cause confusion later on. If somebody's seeing uh, the function definition and then the invoke and the invocation of the function, they may think it's the same thing. But anyway, uh, let's practice a little bit and see uh, a little example of how this how functions are made. So uh, as I said earlier, functions are usually defined uh, near the end of your script. So I'm going to skip a few lines and start writing my function here. I've already declared two variables. If you can, if you know some basic math, you'll know that I'm going to multiply the loan and interest and add it to the loan and see what my new value is going to be. So declare a function, function. We'll call it add interest. And I'm going to call my parameters x and y just because I can and I'll show you how they line up with uh, the invocation of the function later on. So in curly braces, I'll declare a local variable, I'll call it calculated x plus, sorry, equals to x plus x times y. So I'm multiplying the loan times the interest, uh, in our case it's going to be a, a 5, and add it to the x, so my loan values can be 1 of 5, just basic math. And then we'll log it to the console calculator. Right now, if I run it, nothing's going to happen because although I defined my function, I didn't invoke it anywhere. So let's invoke it here. So we'll do add interest. Remember, open and close parentheses, even if you're not sending anything. If even if the function doesn't require anything, you're still need to invoke it. Uh, we'll do loan as my first argument and interest as my second argument. So when add interest is sending information to my actual function definition. Uh, loan will be the same as x and interest will be the same as y. So I can name them the same thing but I purposely did not. So let's open up my console log. Let's update and run. There you go, 105 as predicted. Pretty simple, right? 
as I said before, functions are reusable, so I can keep using them over and over again. You don't always have to send in variables. You can even send in uh, exact values. So we'll do add interest 5, uh, and then I'll do 1. I'll do 1.00, it's 100%, right? Let's do one more, add interest, we'll do 25, and then 0 0.50, 50% interest, really high interest. Add interest, actually I'll leave that, uh, don't let me fix it, IMT or interest, we'll do 500 and then 0.06%. And let's see what we have. When I update, I'll clear my console and then run it. There you go, 105 and then 10. 10 is going to be here. Uh, sorry, 10 is going to be here because it's 100%. Uh, and then 37.5 and then 530 makes perfect sense. So this at interest function is reusable. You can, you can invoke it as many times as you want and it always will uh, run this piece of code and log it to the console. And console log is, works a little bit differently than adding something to the inner HTML. So if I actually do this, document dot get element by ID total, just because I created that span in our HTML, we'll do calculated. So now if I run it, it'll actually just update my HTML with the last value, so 530 uh, here, because I'm not appending, I am just assigning. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, functions can be uh, assigned to variables, which is something that I've actually done in the past when I've covered uh, storing data into variables and functions and etc. Uh, check out that tutorial as well. So let's actually, I commented everything out, let's actually assign add interest as a function, as a variable. So the var add interest equals to function. If this looks familiar, it should. Function x, y will do... I am just going to copy this over. Copy and paste, because it's the exact same thing. Right. Let me open my inspect element, console, update, and run, and nothing's working. Why? This is add interest is not a function, but we clearly know that it is a function because we defined it right here. So the the downside of assigning a function to a variable instead of declaring it like this as we have here is because it's treated as a variable. So if it's not yet defined, the JavaScript's not going to find it. So the fix to this is to I'm going to cut that out and paste it up here. So you need to define the vari define the function with the, if you're assigning it to a variable before you actually invoke it. So now, if I update and run, there we go, we have our answers. So this is not always recommended, which means that you need to declare your functions up top. Uh, this can also be uh, also uh, affect you if you have all of your functions in a different file uh, completely, which some people do if you're creating libraries. Uh, so this is actually the preferred method, method one. Uh, use functions, declare functions uh, elsewhere. And not up here. I'll just comment this out so when you look at the code later on you can see both examples. So and wrong. There we go. So there you go. Pretty easy, right? So this is an introduction to custom functions. Uh, I hope this tutorial helped open your mind on how custom functions work. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. I will be covering uh, value returning functions because remember this function didn't return anything. It's just executing a piece of code and then ending abruptly. So stay tuned for the next tutorial. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net. Have a good one.